Hello everyone, this is Donna Miller again, picking right up um, from the previous um, podcast, just giving you general information about elections. As I was saying, I'm so sorry the last podcast ended, and I'm not sure, but I think it sort of doubled on itself, so it might be one part of the podcast uh, has music and the other part of the podcast does not. Forgive me for that. I don't often have uh, that type of um, situation. It's just me recording this podcast. And uh, forgive me for that. I hope it it turns out okay. And I hope you can still learn from it. The information is very good. It was just something technical about it ended abruptly. And um, it's like 35 minutes worth of information. And then when I tried to add music, something happened to that. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on. This is Donna Miller with Vote Voiced Podcast. And I had uh, ended the other podcast. And I just want to say, you know, this is Donna with Vote Voice. We're a nonprofit dedicated to getting out the vote. Follow us on all the major platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, We're on TikTok. We're on YouTube. And we have a new vote, uh, WordPress. Uh, we also at www.votevoice.com. So you can visit us there. Now, when the other podcast ended, I was telling, I had told you about the Genesee Intermediate School District. And what I was beginning to tell you is the importance of voting on every election level. And the reason why we want to vote on every level is because we need to have the opportunity to get to know the people that we're voting for. We we'll, we can follow a person's uh, political career from the beginning, and we'll know exactly who this person is, and we do not have to uh, fall for a person's uh, persona it, during some major election that they can just make up because we aren't aware of who they are many many people start their political career on levels such as the school board level and it's wonderful you can go to school board meetings you'll be able to follow what this person uh, is doing in their community and that's why it's very very important that we vote on every election to make sure that we know who we're voting for. Now, the next thing that everyone's going to be voting for in Michigan, okay, on May 4th, 2021, is the operating millage, okay? Now, let's talk about what the difference is between an unvoted and a voted millage. Now, this is very important for a lot of homeowners, okay? Now, an unvoted millage, uh, which is can also be called an inside millage, is leveled by local governments without a vote of the people. Now, the maximum allocation of an inside millage is 10 mills and is divided between county, school, district, municipalities, uh, or the township of each taxing district okay like new albany plain local schools collect four point mills in this category now a voted millage is also known as an outside millage is approved by a vote of the people no outside millage can be collected without a majority vote from the voters in that specific district or community, okay? There are a lot, a few um, places that are gonna be voting on a millage. Um, Let's talk about Romulus. The city of Romulus has a proposal for an operating millage. And the vote on this is Tuesday, May 4th, 2021. Now, the proposal will allow the school district to continue to levy the statutory rate of not to exceed 18 mills 
on all property except principal residence or other property exempted by law required for the school district to receive its full revenue per pupil foundation allowance and restores millage lost as a result of the reduction requi required by the Michigan Constitution of 1963. Okay, so it's saying that uh, shall they're asking you to if shall the currently authorized millage rate limitation on the amount of taxes which may be assessed against all property except principal residence and other property exempted by law in Romulus Community Schools, Wayne County, Michigan, be renewed by 17.6836 mills. Okay, that's 17.6836 uh, on each $1,000 of taxable um, value. Okay, for a period of 10 years from 2022 to 2031. Now there's more here. You can go, okay, and find at the city of Romulus a, um, a sample ballot, okay, of what is going on. They're going to be doing this in Precinct 3.9, uh, Precinct 4R, uh, Precinct 5, Precinct 7 and 8, Precinct 11, Precinct 12, and Precinct 1.0. Okay? Um, everybody in Romulus needs to know what is going on. Okay? Now, there's a millage for the Northville Public Schools also. Okay? And everyone is going to be voting... Um, that millage. Um, let's see. They're saying, okay, about this millage in, um, Northville Public School District. They're saying that this is not a new tax. They said this millage was last approved by voters 2021. And um, they say that this voltage is vital. You need to make sure that um, they're, they're saying that uh, this is a statewide election. Even though rent businesses uh, only, let's see, they're saying that this a millage applies only to none homestead properties such as businesses, rental properties, and second homes. Even though owners of primary residence are not affected, state laws requires a district-wide election to approve the operating millage. So please find out, okay, what is going on because um, this is a non-homestead operating millage renewal. And this is for Northville School Districts, okay, on May 4th, 2021. So if you're living in that school district, please become informed on the millage and understand how it's going to affect you. Now, uh, St. Clair Township Precinct 1 has a local school district proposal, which is a renewal on non-homestead property operating millage okay now it says this millage renewal will allow the marysville public school district to continue to levy the statutory allowed rate of 18 mills against all property except principal residence and other property exempted by law this previously authorized levy of 18 mills expires with the 2021 levy so they are asking for you, says, shell the limitation on the amount of taxes which may be assessed against all property except principal residents and other property exempted by law in the Marysville Public School District, St. Clair County, Michigan, be renewed at a rate of 18 mills. That's $18 on each 100, I'm sorry, 1000 
of taxable value for a period of five years. Okay, that's 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, and 2026, inclusive to provide funds to the Marysville Public School District for operating proposals, generating estimated tax revenues for the first year the millage is authorized and levied of three million five hundred thirty thousand twenty seven okay some people feel that the millages are an extra burden amongst homeowners and and that the millage should be paid by larger companies so you really really need to understand what's going on in the millages okay and let's see just in case i missed it uh city of romulus precinct 4wb also has a millage okay so we need to be aware of that um now there's a proposal in dearborn heights precinct 23 24 25 26 and 27 this is supposed to be on the ballot it is a local school district proposal building and site bond okay and they're um, asking for the dearborn high school district number seven wayne county michigan borrow michigan borrow the sum of not to exceed six million four hundred twenty five thousand dollars and issue its unlimited tax general obligation bonds therefore for the purpose of defraying all or part of the cost of remodeling and equipping at or re-equipping school buildings including structures athletic fields or other facilities or parts of or additions to those facilities acquiring preparing developing and improving sites or parts of or additions to sites for school buildings including structure athletic fields and parking lots okay everyone who has a child in these schools you need you know if these things are working if these things are necessary i have seen school districts with plenty of money coming in that aren't doing anything now i don't know okay this is my children are grown now but in the past there were some school districts that are really really criticized now on the other hand in the school district my children were in we always gave the schools whatever they asked now what i noticed is all of the funding that we gave the schools while our children were attending really didn't there wasn't a you can we my kids went to very very good school public school i am totally uh, a supporter of public schools but i noticed that as my children were graduating you could see all of the foundation of taxes that we poured into this school you really really saw that as our children were coming out of school now i know that my children went to a really really good school they have come back to me and say mom you know people noticed the difference between the schools that we went to because they just the kids were very well educated in public school so as a parent you are the ones who know if your school district is keeping faith with you and your children. So it is really up to the parents to decide what needs to be done. I needed to finish this. Um, like I said, I had a little, little, little glitch with my recordings and you may find that the recording is repeating itself um one has music one does not just go ahead and uh listen as far as you need to and maybe you want to listen twice so that you can uh have any information you think you you might need you might need to listen to the information again now 
I just want to say something very quickly um, just to make sure that I didn't miss anything. Let's talk about um, voter ID, okay? Now, the voter ID requirement in the state of Michigan, okay, is like when you go to the polls to cast a ballot, you will be asked to produce photo identification. Now, this is a result of the 1996 law determined to be enforceable by the Michigan Supreme Court in 2007. So if anyone tells you you don't, there's not any voter ID requirements here, it's not true. Now, you have to have a Michigan driver's license or state-issued ID. Driver's license or personal identification card issued by another state. Federal or state government issued photo identification. A U.S. passport, military ID with photo, student identification from a high school or accredited institution of higher learning, tribal card with photo. Now, the ID does not need your address. If you do not have photo ID or did not bring it with you to the polls, you may still vote, okay? You simply sign an affidavit stating that you are not in possession of photo identification. Your ballot is included with all others and is counted on election day, okay? This is very important for you to know. Now, By law, every Michigan voter must present picture identification at the polls or sign an affidavit attesting that he or she is not in possession of picture identification. Now, remember, on Election Day, you need to bring an acceptable form of photo identification to the polls on Election Day. If you do not have photo ID... You can still vote, okay? And now your photo ID does not need to have your address on it. Now, the name on your identification card may be a shorter form of your name. For example, uh, Bill for William or Kathy for Catherine. Okay, that's acceptable. Now, after showing your photo ID to the poll worker and signing the application, you can cast your ballot. Now, you can vote without photo ID. Now, if you do not have photo ID, you can still cast a ballot simply by signing an affidavit. And the affidavit can be used by a voter who does not have acceptable voter ID. And um, once again, you sign the affidavit, you may cast your vote. It will be counted with all the other ballots on election day. Now, if you do not have a driver's license or an acceptable photo identification, you can still get a state identification card at your local Secretary of State branch for $10, okay? Now, uh, a state state ID cards are free to individuals who are 65 or older or who are blind. Now, the cards are also free to those who have had driving privileges terminated due to physical or mental disability. Now, the fee can be weighed for individuals who present other good causes for a fee waiver. Now, proof of identity and residency are required when applying for an ID card. Now, just go to michigan.gov SOS, I'm sorry, slash SOS for the details on what forms are acceptable in order to prove identity and residency. You can call 888-SOS-MICH. That's 888-767-6424. And just tell them Donna Miller from Vote Voice sent you, okay? And you can go ahead and get everything you need. Okay, now um, I just want to thank everybody again. Um, Oh, you know what? Let's talk about something real quick. Let's talk about spoiling an absent voter ballot. This is important. It did come up a lot in the last election. Now, if a voter has already voted absentee 
and wishes to change their vote, okay, because maybe the candidate dropped out of the race or for any other reason, a voter can spoil their ballot by submitting a written request to their city or township clerk. Now, the voter must sign the request and state if they would like a new absent ballot mailed to them or if they will pick it up in person at the clerk's office. Now, the request must be received by 5 p.m. the Friday before the election if received by mail. An absent ballot that has been returned to the clerk may be spoiled in person at the clerk's office until 10 a.m. the Monday prior to the election. Okay? Absent ballots that have not been returned to the clerk may be spoiled in person at the clerk's office until 4 p.m. the Monday prior to the election. If a voter has not returned his or her ballot, the voter can surrender the ballot or sign a statement stating that the ballot was lost or destroyed and vote at the polls. There is no option on election day to spoil an absentee ballot that has been received by the clerk. Now you can contact your clerk, okay? Um, And you can do that uh, in the voter section of the Michigan Voter Information Center website. That was something, there was a lot of that um, during the 2020 election. People just weren't sure. They weren't sure if they could vote, if they had been a parolee or if they served time. There was a lot of issues about spoiling a ballot. And so we're going to try here at Vote Voice to make sure we cover all this information. And I will cover it often throughout the year. So we may have another podcast discussing this so that we can continue to be up to date. There is so much going on. Just remember people, voting is a privilege and voting is wonderful. And everyone should have the opportunity to vote. Keep your eye on the 30 to the 39 bills at the legislature okay keep your eye on that because we want to make sure that we have access to voting okay this is donna miller with vote voice i'm here to educate you to motivate you to let you know that voting is a privilege make it your lifestyle this Donna Miller at Vote Voice. Don't forget to visit www.votevoice.com. Go ahead and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're going to be on TikTok. Uh, we're on TikTok now. Um, we're on WordPress. I thank you for listening to Vote Voice Podcast. You have a wonderful day.